Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're doing something a little bit new. Um, I've talked about books beforehand with the Dr. Sleep book, but this uh, is going to be pretty much just a video about a book. So I'm gonna kind of call it a book review, um, even though I'm not gonna truly be like breaking down like, you know, the whole story. I'm just gonna kind of tell you my opinion about it. But either way, it's a new thing that we're doing on this channel and I hope you guys like it as much as I do. And the book I'm gonna be talking about today is The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. Now this is not a new book. It came out in 1959 and there's two movies and a Netflix series about it now. Um, so it's definitely not a new story and I'm so mad that it's taking me 24 years of my life to read it, but I've read it, I love it, and now I want to talk about it. Like I said, the book came out in 1959 and was written by Shirley Jackson and it's considered one of the scariest books ever written. Even my favorite horror writer Stephen King has given this book prop as a story that kind of transcends time and will scare generations to come. And for a little summary of the book, it's about Dr. Montague who on his mission to prove that ghosts are real and find true scientific evidence invites a bunch of people to come to Hill House to try and help and antagonize whatever might be laying there. When you ask the townspeople about the Hill House, they tend to kind of react how any characters do um, in a book about a haunted house of like, oh, it's just a creepy house, the people that live there are creepy, it's not worth wasting your time, like don't go up there. No one seems to really care about the Hill House. Everyone seems to think that it is a true dark entity that has some mysterious thing that happens in it, whether or not that's just the people that live there or the house itself, but the townspeople want nothing to do with this house. And when the doctor invites a bunch of people to come to the house to help with his research, these people are specifically people who have had ghost encounters or other paranormal things happening to them. But of all the letters he sends out, only two people respond, Eleanor and Theodora. Eleanor Vance is considered the main character of this story. We see everything happening kind of through her eyes and we follow her emotional reactions to things. Theodora is just a super whimsical, outgoing girl that, that has like a little bit of telepathic powers. Uh, the doctor believes that she has the ability to kind of read the emotions and understand like the thoughts people are going through. And you see this kind of throughout the story. Eleanor will be thinking thinking about something and then just coincidentally Theodora will mention something that's very similar to what Eleanor was thinking. And the last person to join Dr. Montague's group is Luke Sanderson who is actually the heir to the Hill House. His aunt and uncle run it at the time and then once they pass on it is going to belong to Luke. And while Luke isn't a super big fan of being the heir to the house, he understands that it is his duty to watch over the house even though he can't really explain why. Now it's no secret that this book is beautifully written and that leads to the biggest reason why this story has such a grip that it does on people. Jackson is very careful to elicit fear without exposing too much, and I think that's a huge part of the story. Um, as anyone can tell you, the suspense sometimes is more terrifying than the actual scare, and that's what you get with this book. Once everyone's at the house, Montague tells his crew of people what their plan is there to basically, without explicitly saying it, they're trying to find proof of paranormal life and life after death. Um, there are so many rumors that this house has had all these experiences. One of the family members committed suicide in the house itself, so giving it this kind of dark undertone, you know that death has occurred there. Um, but Montague basically wants to try to map out the house and then have everyone kind of just go about their day and write down any odd experiences that they have. And like I said earlier, we follow the story of Eleanor. And Eleanor is a hermit, essentially. She spent most of her life uh, taking care of her mother, and after her mother's death, she moved in with her sister and has kind of always been a loner. She doesn't really have any close friends, never really had a real relationship. She's very isolated and blames a lot of that on her mother having to take care of her. And after her mother's death, Eleanor feels almost guilty that she's relieved that she can finally be herself, but still doesn't really have anywhere or anyone to go to. And the reason Dr. Montague wanted Eleanor to come to the house was because she had experienced demonic uh, like possession. Uh, there's a couple of things talking about her experience a poltergeist when she was younger. Uh, Jackson never goes into it into the book, which adds to that sort of suspense. You're always expecting to find out like the real reason Eleanor was there or like what happened to Eleanor as a child, but we never really find out what it is that encouraged Dr. Montague to write to Eleanor. And with Theodore, like I said, she just has those telepathic powers, kind of the ability to sense and feel what someone else is thinking, um, but we never explicitly get a yes or no as to whether or not she can really do that. Like I said, we don't really get a lot of answers in this book but it's unlike anything I've ever read. I usually get really frustrated whenever we're given sort of vague details that aren't really elaborated on because it can feel almost as if the author is trying to just fill in the gaps to make their story make sense. 
But Jackson sets these things up intentionally because like I said, she doesn't want you to really understand what's happening. It's almost as though Jackson wants to put a veil over your eyes and to sort of lead you into this creepy dark place without giving you the full details. And you feel that suspense and sort of nagging in the back of your head as you read like, oh my god, like what's going to happen? Are we going to see something? Is Eleanor going to become possessed all of a sudden? And the, as the story kind of unfolds, you almost forget that you don't know everything. And one of the biggest ways that we see Jackson doing this is with the actual happenings at the house. Sort of weird things start to happen very early on in the story. But every time we see something happening or, you know, Eleanor is experiencing something, we don't really get to know what it was. We never really see an entity, we never hear a voice, we never have an interaction like face to face with anything. It's just hearing it or thinking you see it out of the corner of your eye or like it's super dark so your eyes could be playing tricks on you. So it's always eliciting the sense of like, is that really what happened? what's really going on here, which is super successful in a story because it gives the reader themselves doubt about what they're reading, which is like something that I've never read before or had an experience reading something like that that gave me doubts about what I was reading and experiencing. And one of the scariest parts of the book, in my personal opinion, and one of the most successful parts of this not really knowing what's happening is when Eleanor and Theodore are asleep in their beds, they're sleeping in the same bedroom, they're side by side, Eleanor starts to hear something at the door and it's like so loud it feels like it's shaking the room it's clawing at it she's terrified she reaches out to Theodora and grabs her hand and they're just sitting in terror listening to these sounds outside and it's very like overwhelming and you almost feel like you can hear it like ringing behind you it's very well written and so scary and had me like the like, nose to the pages reading and I was so into the story and the scariest part was whenever everything calmed down and Eleanor kind of starts to sit up and realize is that the bedroom lights never went off even though it was dark beforehand the lights are still on and she looks over and Theodora is sitting straight up in the bed and Eleanor's still holding her hand but realizes that it's not Theodora's hand and she pulls her hand away and runs to the other side of the room and Theodora's like what's going on what's happening and Eleanor's like who's whose hand was I holding? And in the beginning of that scene, Jackson sets it up so beautifully because she says, you know, Eleanor gets freaked out. She hears Theodora say something. She reaches out for Theodora. She grabs her hand. They're like, oh my God, what's happening? So the whole time you think Theodora is in on it too, just to come to find out at the end that only Eleanor was really hearing or seeing those noises and only Eleanor had reached out her hand to hold. So now we don't know whose hand she was holding. And now that we know that there was something in the room with her. But then the next scene is a completely different day and Eleanor doesn't really think about what had happened that night. So you're left without answers. We have no idea whose hand Eleanor was holding or what resides in that bedroom. We have no idea what was outside the door screaming and clawing at it. So it just adds to that level of fear that you don't realize is sort of building until you get the release. And I thought that was so clever. I had to put the book down after that scene and like take a second because I was like, oh my God, like that was set up so beautifully. And we see this theme just throughout the entire book of just these setups and these creepy things happening, but we never actually see the thing. And the house seems to have a take on Eleanor that it doesn't really have with everyone else. She seems to kind of be feeding into it more, and you aren't sure if it's her own mental state deteriorating or if it's actually the house you know, kind of manipulating her brain and making her go insane. It's stated early on that Eleanor's always been a loner and never really felt like she belonged, and you feel that with her. She starts to get paranoid that everyone else thinks that she's going crazy because she seems to be the only one experiencing these major things, and everyone seems to kind of recoil from her, but the way that Pete, the dialogue is written out, because we're seeing it from Eleanor's point of view, we're seeing it as though they're talking badly about her, or that they're laughing behind her back, but then reflecting on it after reading, those could have just been regular conversations that Eleanor kind of built up in her head to be about her. And it's something that I feel like people can understand and relate to. You know, you've always felt like if someone's mad at you and you aren't really sure and you can hear them like giggling, you maybe think like maybe they're laughing at me, maybe they're making fun of me. 
and you you can kind of get into your own head about those things and I feel like that's something probably almost everyone's experienced and to have that laid out in a book and to realize that just because the main character was seeing it this way doesn't mean that's how it was it adds to that level of like sympathy that you feel for Eleanor and especially towards the end spoiler alert if you've never read the book um towards the end Eleanor is told that she should be leaving um the doctor and everyone's really concerned for her she's had a lot of really crazy experiences and almost got herself severely injured when going into a condemned part of the building so they tell her that maybe the house has too much of a hold on her and that she should leave and Eleanor now is completely bonkers and go has gone insane because of this house and feels like the house and her have a connection and that she belongs there and it's her house and while driving away she decides that she doesn't want to leave and turns back and drives full force into a tree and you're assuming that she's dead um, the book just kind of abruptly ends with her driving into this tree and her last thoughts are I'm going to be with the house if they really care about me they'll stop me and the last thing she thinks is why aren't they stopping me and after reading the book and kind of reflecting back on um, the loneliness that Eleanor felt and how she felt like everyone was laughing at her it makes me wonder was her last thought why aren't they stopping me more of like why aren't they stopping me maybe they really don't care or was it her coming to a realization of like why aren't they stopping me like i'm about to do something serious but the hold on the house is just too severe and ends up killing her um it was a really abrupt and creepy ending and really makes you sit there and think because like i said we don't get answers we have no idea what's inside that house if there is anything at all or if it's just the house itself gives you the sense of uneasiness they say in the book the way the house was built was that all the corners aren't exactly 90 degrees to give you a sense of being off balance and that's kind of how you feel throughout this whole book you feel off balance because the characters feel off balance but then it leads to the question of, is that the whole reason people have some kind of psychotic breaks here is because the house itself is meant to make you feel uneasy. There's so many underlying like themes and tones that you can feel in this book that, like I said, I've just never really read and felt before in a scary story. And I've read a lot of scary stuff. I'm a huge Stephen King fan. Um, but I've never read one of his stories that is built the way that this one is. And like I said, there were two movies based on this book and I've only seen the second one called The Haunting. It came out in the 90s. It's been years since I've seen it, so I don't fully remember it. I rewatched the trailer um, while kind of like looking up stuff for this video and I remember like bits and pieces of it, but it, I'd have to go back and rewatch it. Um, but I haven't seen the 1963 movie, which was released about four years after the book came out. But I did watch the trailer for it and it had a line at the end of the trailer that I think really sums up this book well. And the line is, you may not believe in ghosts, but you can't deny terror. And I think that's a beautiful sentiment to kind of like sum up what this book is about because they're trying to discover whether or not ghosts are real. And you know, lots of people in the world don't believe in ghosts, but even if you don't believe in ghosts, you can't deny the creepiness of this book and the terror this book elicits and the kind of uneasy, unsettling feeling a house like this would give someone. Ghosts are not, creepy houses are creepy houses. And this book is really, Really good at saying even if you don't believe that ghosts are real and you don't believe they're gonna find proof of ghosts you can't deny how unsettling this house is and the overwhelming feel of, feeling of loneliness that Eleanor is projecting because of it and because the house never explicitly tells you what is happening or who the bad guys are or whether or not there are ghosts or aren't you still have this levels of fear because you aren't sure what's going to happen the suspense is still there you have the characters kind of quarreling between each other because Eleanor is building all this up in her brain and you really aren't sure what's going to happen or make her snap and you really aren't sure where the story is going to go or whether or not the next encounter will be the one where we get the proof because the characters themselves only ever hear things eleanor felt that hand grabbing onto her and never actually saw whose hand she was holding they only ever feel or hear things which adds to that terror because like i said sometimes the suspense is more terrifying than the execution and this book is all suspense and then ends on that abrupt horrifying note of Eleanor running her car into the tree and you're presuming that she is dead. So even the reader is left at the end of the story not really sure what happened in that house. Which is something that may bother me in another story but was written and constructed so beautifully in this book that I just fell in love. I've also watched the Netflix series Haunting of Hill House. It's basically like inspired by this book. It's not really based on the book. It's more about a family that lives there and kind of what happened growing up in a house like that. Um, some of the names are similar. I think one of the daughters and the sons or names are actually Eleanor, Theodora, and Luke. 
Um, but I really like the Netflix series. I'm waiting for season two to come out. But after reading this book, I'm like, I love the book way more. And I'm excited to see the new season on Netflix just because now I have a whole new level of appreciation for the story just in general. Um, but the Netflix series, I really love. I do recommend it for you guys if you haven't seen it. And maybe I'll make a video about that as well, kind of comparing the differences and what I like and don't like about the series. Um, if that's something you guys would be interested in watching, just let me know. But all in all, I am so mad it's taking me so long to read this book, but I'm so glad I have it now. It's definitely going to be a book that I read multiple times and I'm going to have it probably out on my bookshelf like constantly. Um, but if you guys haven't read A Haunting of Hill House, I definitely recommend it. It's a short read, about 240-ish pages. I think I read it in the course of like four or five hours over like three days. So it's not a super heavy read, it's pretty easy, but honestly once you start getting into it, it's really hard to put down. I almost missed dinner one night because I was so like engrossed in the story. But that was kind of just a short review on A Haunting of Hill House. I know it's an old book, an old story, it's been done and done again, but I just, I read it and could not get it off of my mind. Mind and I had to kind of tell you guys about it and just sort of purge all of the excitement I had for reading this book. But if you've read it, let me know what you think. And if you haven't, I really do suggest reading it. Um, if you have read it, leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought. Or you can head over to my Instagram, what a horror. I'll be making a post about this video as well. But I thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more videos. I put out new videos every Friday. And until next time, stay spooky.